please welcome Premier David Burt to the stage, everybody. Hello, Hello. Yeah, I think so. Is it? Yeah, we, we just passed over news. 1208. Yeah, we're good, yeah. we're good. So yeah. welcome, thanks for being here. I know you have a main stage session a bit later today, so we're gonna get you warmed up. You can try out some material, some good bits. We'll see what we can do. All right, so Bermuda has been in the digital asset game for a minute now. Five I got, years. I gotta ask you, the Bahamas took a major black eye with the FTX implosion. You're saying that you have the regulatory frame, framework that could prevent something such as that, but I want to get your personal take on your reaction to that implosion in, in November. Well, I think it was unfortunate. It was unfortunate for uh, the persons who lost money. Um, it's unfortunate for all of those persons who were lured in. Uh, but the fact is that it just speaks to the importance of making sure that you not only have a strong legal environment, but you actually are doing the regulation which is necessary to prevent things because it harmed the overall industry and it caused a lot of pain for a lot of persons. And so from that perspective, you know, for us, we were, our regulator is very strict. So from that perspective, we haven't had any challenges like that in Bermuda. So operationally, like what's the lesson? Is it, is it proof of reserves? Is it the separation of, of, of client and customer mm -hmm. funds? Like, like what, are you, what are the actual takeaways that you're using from FTX to inform your approach going forward? The only thing is that regulators have to be strong. They have to make sure that they're actually doing what they are supposed to be doing, and I think that's what we do in Bermuda. So no one comes to Bermuda to escape regulation. Our regulation is very tough. Our companies will say, you know, the BMA is firm but fair. But from that aspect, if you have strong and proper regulation that is actually being enforced, you can avoid things like that. Got it. Last one for me, then I'm going to toss it to the, to the group. Um, you know, Coinbase made some, made some major news when they announced that they were going to be setting up shop mm -hmm. in the Bermuda. It seemed like a big win for you, especially relative to sort of this global race to court crypto firms. Mm -hmm. Take me inside that deal. What happened there? Well, I think what Coinbase recognized, which is what a lot of other companies have recognized, is that we have a superior regulatory environment. Uh, I remember I was at Consensus five years ago when we announced that we would be tabling the Digital Asset Business Act. Five years on, uh, we provide a regulatory clarity then. We have regulatory clarity for derivatives, staking, lending, all those various items which, things, which companies want. And so from that perspective, when they examined all of the various options, they uh, decided that Bermuda was the best place to uh, build out their global business. And so from that, we are heartened, but they're not the first big names that come to Bermuda, whether it's Block and Cash App or Circle, Night Next Door, you know, XBTO, others that have been in Bermuda for a while that have full licenses that are continuing to serve uh, the world. So I think that we'll see more and more because it is, as I've said, a race to the top for regulation. And Bermuda has proven that we are a place that you can do that. You must have been pretty pumped. There was no like fist bump, uh, no like, just like, you, were, you, were, you weren't fired up. Celebration. Oh, there was a There was no question. Now. There was a celebration. <laughs> I mean, I, I, I was very excited, but I, I joke with people uh, because I, um, every gray hair that I have, I say that it's something that I know that I can't tell anyone. Oh, no. And so, they, you know, it, we've been talking to them for a while. And I remember I was at the Satoshi Roundtable in Dubai, and they're having all these little meetings and all the rest. So I'm there with my team, and people are asking, well, Coinbase is there, and people are asking, well, what is Coinbase doing? What is Coinbase doing? What is Coinbase doing? And of course, we couldn't say a word. So, yes. Those more and more and more and more. So I have a question for you. I'm a very, very harsh critic about our public servants in the United States of America, especially the SEC, because we have no clear guidelines. Mm -hmm. For you, what is the motivation on actually having clear guidelines? And tell, talk to us a little bit about that. So, well, that, so the crypto companies can actually go there, mm -hmm. pay their taxes, mm -hmm. operate properly. Mm -hmm. Well, I think from that perspective, it's unfortunate what is happening in the United States. Um, and when we started our journey back in 2017, we said we're going to make sure we provide clarity. We define digital assets as its own separate asset class five years ago. Um, so you know what a digital asset is and what it isn't because there were some discussions about can we fit it into another piece of legislation and we realized that that would work and that was advised by our regulators. So we had that and it's set up there. I mean, I just hope that the United States can find regulatory clarity. But what we do, when we travel to the United States, I was in Washington, D.C. Uh, uh, last month, and we basically just tell them about what it is that it is we're doing, and we try to share that information. We share it with Treasury, SEC, um, and Congress, and all the rest. There are, not everyone in Congress is 
clueless to what is going on. There are some really good voices that they're trying to get this stuff done. But as you know, they're suffering from a little bit of an FTX hangover. So hopefully they'll be able to move things forward. Well, I think that Bermuda is one of my top five places to relocate now. So thank you. Well, it should be your top place to relocate, <laughs> not top five. Okay, you saw no, I'm saying. Me. It's there because we, we have a licensed regime, because people want to work with regulators. And so our smallest license is a test license. It's not an easy license to get. It only costs $1,000, but allows you to work with regulators. And when you're at a conference like this, where there's people who are still figuring out what they want to do, it's an ideal place to test it, get some backing from a regulator, being able to work through those issues, possibly attract more funding, and continue to build out. And you don't even have to be on island to get a test license when you then graduate to a full set sandbox license, then yes, we require people on island, but we want to make sure we support the growth of the industry globally. Thank you. Maybe we can do the hash live from, from Bermuda one day. Absolutely. I'm <laughs> like Coindesk in Bermuda. I, I, w I would love to know how you're thinking about CBDCs. Well, the approach that we take to CBDCs is that we do not believe that the government should be issuing a CBDC. And so our approach is uh, we license stablecoin issuers, which is something else that is under DABA. There's a few uh, companies that have had uh, license issue stablecoins, Jewel Bank, and I think uh, Block and Cash App have a license issue stablecoins. Persons can issue stablecoins. We verify that they have the reserves, and from a country perspective, we will allow those stablecoins, which are issued under regulatory environment, to be uh, used for the payment of goods and services in the domestic economy and with the government. Do you think other governments should adopt this way of thinking? I am not going to tell other governments what to do. They can take their own choices. Um, I mean, you, you're trying to get me to step in a few landmines, and I'm not going to do that right now. <laughs> I just know the approach that, we, that we're taking. I love the Bitcoin socks. I got to note that first. Uh, I want to ask about international pressure because historically there has been movements by larger governments, and especially we're seeing this in the G7 nations and G20 nations, to form policy on behalf of their neighbors. Uh, happens time and time again. Bermuda has been part of that. A lot of the Caribbean nations have been a part of that in the past. Is this issue going to be the same as we've seen in the past, just a different topic? Well, I think that it's convenient to uh, look at all international financial centers as the same, but that's not the case. Uh, Bermuda has a long history of regulation of financial services. Bermuda is one of the top insurance markets on the planet. We have Fortune 100 companies that are based in Bermuda, full offices, brick and mortar, uh, the entire mine management control. There's only two jurisdictions on the planet that have full regulatory equivalents with both the European Union and the United States when it comes to risk, and that's Bermuda and Switzerland. And so from that perspective, regulators globally know the standard of our regulation. They trust we participate in international uh, forums. We participate in all the working groups, whether it's IOSCA, whether it's all those other groups in the OECD. And so from that perspective, we believe that they understand what it is that you're doing. When Bermuda's legislation and its regulatory approach is being quoted, whether it's in Congress or whether it's in Europe, that means that people are taking note of what they're doing in that conversation. So we don't fear that. What is important is that you're actually regulating this properly. And I think what has been seen is that we do know how to regulate it properly and we're going to continue to be strong with regulation. Awesome. Well, thank you for being here. We're going to leave that conversation here. I know you got the main stage session coming up, so that was fun. Thank you for being here. This is Premier David Burt of Bermuda.